Good morning, and welcome Holy Cross parishioners, and a welcome to all who may be visiting us. We are pleased to have you join our Eucharistic celebration today as we celebrate God's presence in our lives on this, the 29th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our readings will be on page 1193 in the Red Worship Book, and our celebrant of Mass today will be Father Reef, assisted by Deacon Joe Placius. Please join in entrance hymn number 617, sing praise to God who reigns above. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Joyful in Our Lady's month of October that remains so beautiful this year, we take time now at Mass to recall our minds and hearts and lives as we repent of sin and ask God's forgiveness and mercy. Lord Jesus, you triumphed over death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you raised your people to new life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our risen hope. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, 
ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, Cyrus, whose right hand I grasped, subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen one, I have called by your name, given you a title. Though you knew me not, I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is no other. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Give the Lord glory and honor. Give the Lord glory and honor. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Tell his glory among the nations. Among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Give the Lord glory and For great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. Awesome is he beyond all the gods. For all the gods of the nations are things of naught. But the Lord made the heavens. The Lord glory and honor. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring gifts and enter his courts. Give the Lord glory and honor. Worship the Lord in holy attire tremble before him all the earth 
Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the peoples with equity. Give the Lord glory and second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father. Knowing, brothers and sisters, loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. in the world as you hold on to the word of life. Alleluia. 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 My dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us, then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that, he said to them, then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then we pay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. There seems to be two realms, two kingdoms, God's and Caesar's. Jesus says so in today's gospel. But can we live in both of them? We want to, don't we? 
Jesus made this statement to settle an argument posed to him by the Pharisees. But if you push this statement too far, everything of Caesar must go away because it is not of God. On the other hand, God has to go away because science and secularism are so powerful in our age. Have you given your life to Caesar? Which realm do you live in? Are you a Sunday Catholic giving to God maybe an hour a week at Mass and then getting on with life? Television and cars and food and work? Or maybe being afraid or wishing things had turned out better? Have you given your life to Caesar? Or do you try it the other way around? Perhaps you are so serious about Christianity and spirituality that you try to get away from every enjoyment of any worldly thing to live an uncorrupted life. Throughout the history of Christianity, there have been many examples. The desert hermits, the cloistered nuns and monks, the great mystics, a penny for Caesar and all the rest for God. Can God and Caesar coexist? Just what if we are created to be a container for God's presence right in the midst of our secular world? What if in spite of the voices saying that you're not worth much, in spite of the setbacks of life, the losses, the disappointments, the reversals, what if you are created with room inside of you where God, out of love for you and others, can be quietly present? There are objections to such an idea. God would never be at home in me, not until I do a lot better in my life. Or you want me to be some kind of a nut running around, acting holy all the time? Or sure, I want to let God in, but I like beer and TV too much. <laughs> what does all this have to do with real life? What if God were a great friend, a loving, faithful friend, who really does want to be with you, within you, as much as possible. In fact, how would it be if God were seen as a companion who actually and truly accepts and forgives you completely whenever you need it? It's another way of looking at the connection between heaven and earth the connection that Jesus wanted. God put us into the world to make it holy, to befriend the things of Caesar, to work in the world of sin with God in spite of our own sins. The Pharisees are trying to trap Jesus into saying something that can be seen as rebellion against the Roman Empire. Jesus knew that they themselves did not have a right under the Ten Commandments, the First Commandment especially, to carry around an image in their pocket at all. So Jesus' answer calls attention to the fact that the common currency of the time was Roman and so had Caesar's image stamped upon it. The image of Caesar on the coin is an indication that the money is Caesar's. But the point of Jesus' line is that each one of us belongs to God because each one of us bears stamp on our souls the image of God. It is an honor and glory to us, to each one of us without exception, that we are in the image of God. It is also an awesome responsibility. When the face of a body is disfigured by self-indulgence and food and drinking, smoking and drugs, when the face of a soul is twisted by envy or hatred or selfishness, that image of God in that person is warped. But there is always a solution that Jesus offers. Many years ago, a friend of mine worked at Monroe Abstract Company in downtown Rochester. And he gave me reams of stationery that were obsolete. The company had bought the old Monroe County Savings Bank, a beautiful 
little marble building right on Main Street. And it was going to be their headquarters, so their stationery was obsolete. I had the stationery cut up at the diocesan print shop, cutting away the letterhead and all the names on the side, and I was left with small sheets of paper which now have my name and coat of arms. The paper has a watermark, which you can see holding up to the light. Genesee linen, 100% cotton, and a head of an Indian, the trademark of Seneca papers. Many years ago, Queen Victoria visited a paper company in London. As she toured the plant, she saw men in a room sorting out filthy rags. Do you make paper of these, the queen inquired? Indeed we do, said the owner. Our best paper is made from rags. So she wanted to know what it was all about. And the owner said, Your Majesty, those rags will be made into our finest paper. And the next week, he sent a box of stationery to the queen with her name on it and her own profile as the watermark. He enclosed the note. Will the queen be pleased to accept a specimen of my paper? With the assurance that every sheet was manufactured from the rags which she saw in the warehouse on her recent visit to our plant. And I trust the result is such that even the queen may admire. Will the queen allow me to say that I have had many a good sermon preached to me in my mill? I can understand how the Lord Jesus can take a poor sinner, the vilest of the vile, and make them clean. And how, though their sins be as scarlet, he can make them white as snow. And I can see how he can put his own image upon them, just as these rags, transformed, may go into a royal palace and be admired. So poor sinners can be received into the palace of the great king. In baptism, you and I receive the watermark of Jesus on our very soul. In the first reading today, we hear of yet another great ruler in history, Cyrus, king of Persia. The Jewish people credit him with releasing them from their exile into Babylon, which lasted 73 years. In fact, today's readings refer to Cyrus as the anointed of the Lord. Anointed in Hebrew is Messiah. Anointed in Greek is Christos, from which we get Christ, and the word chrism, the oil used in baptism, confirmation, and holiness. Isaiah the prophet puts these words into the mouth of God in our first reading today. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred. What this means is that the Jewish people saw the hand of God operating in human history, allowing them to return to Jerusalem to rebuild its walls, to rebuild the city of David, and of course its temple, replacing the one built by Solomon, son of David, and later destroyed by the Assyrian army. So do we see the hand of God operating in our lives, in our parish, as we strive to make present the kingdom of God? I'm happy to welcome to our pulpit today, Bobby Uwe, who is part of our parish council. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. 
Ms. Father, I, I stand here um, as a representative of the Holy Cross Council and also of the Finance Committee. I'd like to give you a quick update on where we stand with our uh, Catholic Ministries appeal. Happy to say that we have reached 69% of our goal, which is approximately uh, a little over $78,000, but we still have uh, approximately 36,000 to go. Um, quick update, uh, as of last year, we received 434 pledges. And um, as of today, we've received 281 pledges and donations. The important thing to note is that we have up to May. We have up to about seven more months to go to make complete the, the pledges. So what we need at this point are about 153 more pledges. So all we need, again, remember, all we need are your pledge and the, um, the, the financial contribution could be spread out over seven months and completed by May. And the reason um, this is important to me is because I feel that it is through our support that we would be able to provide the best future for our, uh, for our children. The Catholic Ministries Appeal supports education for seminarians, supports um, training for deacons, but also the sacraments that we see here at Holy Cross and all the other parishes at the, within the Diocese of Rochester. And fortunately, I've seen um, to our family the, um, the effects of um, our contributions to the Catholic Ministries Appeal. This year, uh, every two years, the diocese participates in the National Youth Catholic, NCYC, National Catholic Youth Conference. And you will see thousands of uh, teenagers that attend this conference. And this is a, a, one of the major um, uh, proceeds of your donations to the Catholic Ministries Appeal. So um, let's continue to support our church without our support we will not be able to pro provide the moral compass that our children need for the future. So we count on your support, and as I said, um, we only need 153 more pledges and approximately 36,000 more to go. Thanks for your attention. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Mary Jo and I am pastoral associate here at Holy Cross for anybody who I haven't met yet. Father Gagne, we have a candidate who has completed her preparation for confirmation. She asks for our blessings and prayers as we go forth to the rite of confirmation at Sacred Heart Cathedral this evening at 5 o'clock. Father, we ask that you now bless this confirmation candidate in recognition of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that she will soon receive. Brittany and Diane, please come forward to be blessed.
As we prepare now to send Brittany and her sponsor to the cathedral uh, to be confirmed by Bishop Matano, we offer our prayers now and we will have instead of the usual uh, profession of faith, we have like we do at the Easter Vigil, the uh, promises of our own baptism. Please respond with a very good firm I do after all these questions. Everyone, do you reject Satan I do. and all his works I do. and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our prayer of the faithful, God our eternal Father, you've heard our statements of faith renewal. Help us now as we accompany in our own hearts uh, Brittany to the cathedral this afternoon and help us with all our intentions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that the Lord might strengthen him in faith and courage as he shows the world the missionary heart of our faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That Christ-centered lives, prayers, and sacrifices fruitfully support the Church's missionaries of the good news at home and abroad. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that during the Catholic Ministry's appeal, we may reflect on the challenge of stewardship and meeting of the theme, glorifying the Lord of our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Brittany Spitali, who will be going to Sacred Heart Cathedral and joining 24 other adults to make her confirmation. May the Holy Spirit work within her from this day forward. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all missionaries who serve God and their fellow brothers and sisters, that they may continue to give witness to the Lord's loving kindness and redeeming presence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering physically, mentally, emotionally, and, or spiritually, and for their caregivers, that they may be measured of the great love of God has for them, especially for Peg Roach, for a speedy recovery, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our fellow Americans celebrating from the ravages of forest fires in California, hurricanes in Houston and other southern areas, and for our fellow Americans in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that God's love and peace are with, especially, Michael Shea, Mary Jane Payne, Peter Alano, Margaret Plouffe, and for Charles Ross, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let's pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. For all of these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, you know all the needs of people who live far away, and you know all the needs of us who live right here. Help us together with all your people, to trust in your Son's word. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> and there will be two collections this weekend. The second collection is for World Mission Sunday.
Brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of God's name for our good of all God's holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. <laughs> Eucharistic Prayer 3. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. In 
the mystery of faith. Celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the significant the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Granted, we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this who have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all, who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. by divine teaching we dare to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace. I leave you my peace, I give you look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another now a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, peace be with, with you, brother. Brother.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
would any minister of communion who is planning to take the Eucharist to a sick or shut-in person please come up to the sanctuary. As we remain seated, we can offer the prayer and petition for our renewal coming in November. Those who have it, please follow along. Abba, God, you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, to gather all humanity into your eternal presence. Jesus told us at the Last Supper that he would lay down his life for all of those who believe in his saving power. On the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and wine of the Passover meal and proclaimed, this is my body, this is the cup of my blood, adding, do this in memory of me. As the Holy Spirit gathers us at the Eucharistic table to celebrate the true presence of the Redeemer Christ, we ask for your grace to grow even deeper in relationship with you as we prepare for your parish renewal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And a few announcements. Are you looking to grow in your faith and get involved in our parish? Holy Cross has many ministries 
that you can join to give of your time and talent. Please look at our website for the various ministries or call Mary Jo Denoto at the parish office. In Holy Cross, tweens and teens, there are many activities happening this weekend and next. Please check out the bulletin so you can let your parents know what activities you would like to participate in. Tickets are on sale after all the masses this weekend for the annual Haunted Pasta Dinner. Please stop by, purchase a ticket or two, and help support our youth. Holiday pies are back. Orders are being taken now, and pickup will be on November 21st. Our annual Mass for Remembrance for the Deceased will be on Saturday, November 11th at 9.30 a.m. And our annual time of renewal will take place November 12th through November 14th. Please mark your calendars. And please uh, join us for coffee after Mass today and see our bulletin on our website for more detailed information on these and all events happening in our parish community. And our recessional hymn will be number 564, Rejoice, the Lord is King. Uh, before we have this pro recessional hymn, speaking of hymns, that magnificent hymn that our choir did at communion time was truly awesome, and I want to give, it, give them a good hand. We're, we're most grateful to them and to Alessio, our new combination choir director and organist, and now today pianist. Let's hear it for him. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benef benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give us in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Be with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Let us go out to love and serve the Lord by serving one another. Thanks be to God.